The Teaching Privacy Project aims to explain how online privacy works. On our website, teachingprivacy.org, you will find 10 principles for protecting your online privacy. Our first principle is, your information footprint is larger than you think. Whenever digital devices communicate, for example, when your cell phone calls a number, your web browser visits a website, or you swipe your credit card at a parking meter, both ends keep a log of what happened. This is similar to your bank keeping track of all transactions on your account. Digital devices are part of our lives, but many people underestimate how much information can be reconstructed from them. For example, the moment you wake up in the morning, your electrical meter may log your increased usage and send that information to your local electric company. This allows them to learn your daily routine, including when you usually leave the house. Your DVR will report which programs you recorded overnight to your cable provider, who may use this information for their own marketing, or may resell it. And the car you turn on to drive to work may send a vehicle health report to the manufacturer. Later, when you go out to lunch, surveillance cameras watch your steps on the streets, and inside the restaurant you are caught by their security cameras and their in-store analytics devices, which include door counters, the logs for the free Wi-Fi, and sometimes even radio frequency proximity sensors that track you using a signal from your cell phone. All of these are digital traces that you leave with every step you make in your daily life, even when you're not using a laptop, smartphone, or health tracker. We call the sum of these traces your digital footprint, or your information footprint. Short of living in a cave and not leaving the hole you dug out in a remote, unconnected place where only satellites can see you from time to time, there are still some things you can do to retain some privacy, in particular when using internet-connected devices. Be aware of which websites you visit, and set your devices to ask you before they join a new Wi-Fi network. Inform yourself about what information you are really giving away when you install and use an app. Often, apps and websites will ask you for permission to access your information. Ask yourself if they really need the information they're requesting. For example, why does that forum site ask for my birth date and postal address? Is it safe to post the photo of my new credit card on Twitter? Does that bird shooting game really need my current location? It doesn't stop there though. When you are posting something on the internet, be aware of what data may be contained in that post. Photos and videos can contain metadata in addition to the content you see or hear. For example, so-called EXIF metadata contains the settings and model of the camera that took the photo, making the source of the photo more identifiable. It can also contain the exact GPS coordinates of the location of the photographer. Even when you're only posting text, you often publish more than meets the eye. The type of browser and operating system and your IP address as well as the time and date you post, are always logged too. Even the exact geographical location of the place where you posted from can often be embedded in a Facebook or Twitter post, often without your knowledge. We have created an app on our website to help you visualise this called Ready or Not? It shows how little effort is needed to figure out someone's typical daily schedule from seemingly innocuous tweets and Instagram posts. Moreover, when information from different websites and other sources is correlated together, your information footprint can convey an exact and unique picture of you and your life. Companies that do this commercially are called data brokers. More about them in a later video, though. The bottom line is that your information footprint is larger than you think, but you have some choices you can make to manage your exposure. Thanks for watching. Visit teachingprivacy.org for more information and for sound advice about how to limit the exposure of your information footprint. And while you're there, drop us a line. We appreciate your feedback.